Two of the most common areas that student pilots find challenging are ATC communications and airfield joining procedures. Let's take a look at our basic airfield join with real air traffic control instructions. We are approaching Fort Pierce Airport from the southwest, heading inbound for a full stop landing. The first thing to do would be to get the ATIS for important weather information and to find the runway in use. Fort Pierce Foundation Zulu. 1153 Zulu, when calm, visibility 7, sea clouds at 2600, temperature 22.21, altimeter 3012. Visual approach, runway 10 right in use, read back, go hold short instructions, read back, runway assignments. Be far departing aircraft, advise ground control direction of flight. Use caution for men and equipment operating in the vicinity of all runways and taxiways. Use caution for personal questions of the airport. Another stand mission 5G modem in effect for the 4K series, more information contact flight service. Taxiway Bravo closed between taxiway Alpha and taxiway Echo. Advise on initial contact. Zulu. Now we know that the wind is calm, the runway in use is runway 10 right, and the altimeter is 3012, and there was no real significant clouds or weather to worry about. We would normally set the altimeter here, but I've left the altimeter as standard in the sim. We can now start to build up a picture of what instructions to expect from the tower. As we already said, we're coming in from the southwest. If we're expecting runway 10 right, it's likely that we're going to be asked to join the airfield in one of two ways. Depending on traffic and other considerations, the most probable instruction is a right-hand base leg join or a straight-in approach. There is only one way to find out, and that's to stop being a wimp and call the tower. Here is the aeronautical information manual structure for the radio call. Your initial call should be brief in case the controller is not ready to receive the full request. I've selected a random call sign from the ATC recordings, which is Whitecap 311. Because the join request is a long transmission, I will not include this in my initial call. Warpist Tower, Whitecap 311. Whitecap 311, sir. Whitecap 311, one three miles southwest, 2,500 feet. Request full stop, information Zulu. Whitecap 311, enter right base from a 10 right. Enter right base from a 10 right, Whitecap 311. So what the f does all that mean? So my initial request was primarily to warn the controller that I'm about to make a request. Using the aim structure, my initial call included the name of the station I wanted to call, which was Fort Pierce Tower, my call sign, Whitecap 311. I omitted the request due to the length, but I could have included a short summary of what I wanted, but I chose not to because it was fairly obvious. Fort Pierce Tower, Whitecap 311. The tower will then respond with my call sign and then their station name. That confirms that I've called the right place. It also confirms that they're ready to receive the full request. This means that I can now launch into my full request. I will use the same structure as the initial call, however I no longer have to use the Fort Pierce Tower prefix. This is because two-way communication has been established and there's no scope for confusion. Whitecap 311, one three miles southwest, 2,500 feet. Request full stop, information Zulu. Here comes the join instruction based on the position information that I gave and other factors such as inbound traffic from other directions. We should listen carefully and ensure that we understand what we're asked to do. Whitecap 311, enter right base from a one zero right. The controller has instructed us to enter a right base from way one zero right. This slots us into the pattern on the base leg here. We should read back the instruction to ensure we've heard it correctly. Enter right base runway 10 right, white cap 311. So now all we have to worry about is how to fly it. We're now around 10 miles to the southwest of the airport. We're also getting a much clearer view of the airfield, which is here. The runway arrangement isn't obvious yet, but that's okay. We know the direction of the runway and can position ourselves accordingly. If we visualize the pattern around the airport, we can give ourselves a good picture of how and where we need to maneuver the aircraft to give ourselves enough room to organize the descent and turn onto the base leg. To achieve this, we do need to be approaching the airport from somewhat of a south direction. So widening out to the right at some stage will probably be a good idea. So the plan for now is to continue towards the airport, keep a good lookout for other traffic joining the airfield and also traffic departing, which is going in the opposite direction, position myself slightly to the south of the pattern, then join the base leg and make the report to the tower. We are now around 8 miles to the southwest of the airport. 
and I have made a slight power reduction to begin a gradual descent down to traffic pattern altitude. This airport is more or less at sea level, so 1000 feet will be sufficient. The airport does have parallel runways, this is a potential source of confusion. It's important that we are aware of this possible error and mitigate it accordingly. One way to do this is to keep the airport diagram handy and as the ground features become more apparent, we can start to pick out the key landmarks like runways. For example, the diagram shows runway 10 right is a much larger stretch of asphalt than runway 10 left. It also shows that the thresholds are staggered. We should therefore see a runway which is slightly further to the west and smaller. This looks like it here. The larger runway is a little further to the east and to the south side of the one we just identified. This looks like it might be it. As you can probably see, I've now started a right turn to head towards the position south of the final approach, where I can later make a left turn to join the base, which is perpendicular to the final. I'm just making a further power reduction now to expedite my descent down to the traffic pattern altitude. What I'm doing now is I'm looking out to make sure that I'm not going to converge with any traffic joining in or exiting the pattern. We have a much clearer view of the field now. The runway is much easier to see. We're now just about entering the class Delta airspace. I'm now starting a left turn towards the beginning of the base leg. So if we were to visualize the pattern now, the final approach is here and the base leg is here. The approach for the parallel runway is here and it's important that we don't overshoot or extend the base through the final for our runway to avoid conflicting with traffic on runway 10 left. So we're approaching the base leg, passing through 1300 feet, so approaching the traffic pattern altitude. We haven't heard anything from the tower since earlier when they said Wake up 3 and enter right base from my 10 right. So we need to contact the tower when established on the base, or just before that, for further clearance. I'm just making a power reduction to reduce the airspeed to start configuring the aircraft for the approach. The airspace seems quiet, so I don't anticipate any delays or extensions at this point. Aiming for around 75 knots with a flaps of 20 degrees is a sensible configuration at this stage. Having a good lookout to check for any traffic that we haven't been told about is always a good idea. From now we're particularly interested in the final approach, the opposite base and anything that may be encroaching from the parallel runway. Ok we're on the base here, let's talk to the tower. Whitecap 311, right base, runway 10 right. Whitecap 311 right, runway 10 right, clear to land. Runway 10 right, clear to land, Whitecap 311. Ok, so here I reported our position, as this was the point that we were cleared to. The tower then acknowledged my position report and cleared us to land on runway 10 right, which I read back. I can now continue to final and land without any further contact with the tower. So here I'm using the base leg to judge whether I'm high or low and making power adjustments as required to adjust the path and maintain the speed. I'm starting a slightly earlier turn than usual. This will help mitigate the threat of traffic from the parallel runway. I know due to the earlier turn that I'm not going to overshoot and I'm giving a margin in case anybody does on that side. I promise it has nothing to do with the fact that I have a bad habit of cheating in the sim and turning early because I want to see the runway easier. So we've hit the final there, established on the Varsis two reds and two whites, so we just need to make power and pitch adjustments to maintain the speed and the glide path now to continue the final approach. You've stuck around this long, so you might as well watch me screw up the landing. So setting four flap now, establishing 65 knots, now holding that touchdown zone in a fixed position in the windscreen and working the power to maintain the airspeed. A little bit lower there, so just making a small correction for that. Looking across the threshold there, around 50 feet with 65 knots of airspeed. Ease the aircraft into ground effect with a little bit of back pressure. Close the throttle completely. Maintain the landing attitude with a bit of back pressure. Hold that attitude until the aircraft settles down onto the ground. After landing, in the absence of any further instructions from air traffic control, we are to take the first available safe exit from the runway. 
Uh, there's a turning coming up here which I'm braking for. That should be sufficient. We take a right turn off here and then uh, hopefully the tower will tell us what to do next. I got 311 contact ground. Contact ground, Whitecap 311. So the tower has just basically handed us over to ground control. We would then switch the frequencies over and contact ground for our taxi instructions, which we won't cover today because that's a video in itself, I think. Thanks for watching.